What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Digital Third. You are watching episode seven, and I am on my couch right now because uh, I am here interviewing Devin Fountain. He is the Webflow uh, developer, designer extraordinaire, and uh, he's on his couch. So it's gonna be we're gonna kick it back. It's gonna be really cool. So uh, you know what? Let's just bring in. Without further ado, let's uh, hang on here. I got to get my soundboard applause. Let's bring in. Devin Fountain, what's up? I'm, I'm on my couch too. <laughs> I have pillows and everything. It's like let's just spend the next hour taking a nap instead of talking. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I we have no script today. We're just gonna have fun. We we are literally just talking about maybe we should just do twenty minutes of silence and meditation and um, yeah, make 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 the audience awkward a little bit. Yeah, like, I'll lead us in I'm... some some breath work. <laughs> So is that how you prep every Webflow project? You, you just get in the zone and do your meditation? Oh. oh, you know what? Truthfully, I've never had anybody ask me this question. Like, everybody's like, how do you work? And, you know, what music do you listen to? And whatever. And I think you'll, you'll probably ask me what music I'm listening to. I've been watching these. But it's like <laughs> nobody has ever asked me, how do you prep for a Webflow build? And truthfully, yeah. my favorite way to prep for a Webflow build is to, like, do nothing prior to like actually starting the build, like staying in bed, the playing it. Yeah, watch TikTok <laughs> and play uh, <laughs> and play like Baldur's Gate three on my Steam Deck. Do you play and, like, Baldur's bring... Gate? Wow. Yeah, I've been I played Baldur's the first Gate one. It was awesome, but it was yeah, the new one's complex. really good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I don't cool. have any. I don't have any prep. I don't have any. You know, super secrets or anything. <laughs> that you sounds know, like, like good prep to me. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, we got some people here. We got Jeff. Good to see you. Zach. Jeff. Love you, baby. Alexander. Dale. Dale, thanks for coming. You're always you're always here. Yeah, Dale, you're great. F Dude, Alexander, that intro was sick. I That was yes. the first time I had seen it. That was great. Yes. Saw you on stage competing at Webflow Comp. I loved that. Good job, bud. Yeah, so good. They are. Yeah. Uh, they've been having fun in the design gym. It's been fun. We've been kicking off some of the sessions in the beta group and uh yeah you will also be leading one of the sections right. for webflow development so thanks for that yeah um yeah you want to do a little plug what, what are you going to be sharing what are you going to be leading um so don't know yet, i think right? that, still figuring yeah out. we don't we don't 100 know yet but um you know i've been talking with benton benton woodring great designer yeah. by the way we're working yeah, on yeah. a project together right now and so we've been talking a lot and we we think that we're going to do something where you know the people at the design gym will design with him on a hero and then go from that hero. So you'll, you'll design in that particular design gym session and then in you'll Figma. move from that session. Yeah. In Figma and you'll move from that, like take that content with you into Webflow, And then I will walk you through building that in Webflow, sort of from scratch. Not, yeah. From scratch and not just like, Hey, we're going to use the Webflow plugin. Okay. It's done. But like <laughs> walking through, okay, here's how I would think about, actually building this particular piece of content like if a designer right. handed this to me which you know I've, I've recently been working with benton on something so i know what he gives me mm -hmm. and i can sort of extrapolate ideas from that and we're going to do that in that session too is like take that thing extrapolate the ideas that maybe the designer intended but hasn't necessarily you know noted down mm -hmm. and then building that from scratch interesting can you tell me more about that <laughs> yeah, so I think that one of the weaknesses that a lot of developers have that I've noticed, and it's okay, like a, a lot of developers aren't designers too. Yeah. But, but one of the tendencies I've noticed is that if things aren't like literal or like, um, you know, they're handed some design document and that particular design doesn't have exact notes on like, what does this state do or how quick is this animation? The devs don't necessarily have the wherewithal to you know, make those design decisions, 
take creative liberties and and choose to do a certain thing based on that mm. you know and i think that that's like a really important skill to have when you're actually building something because sometimes you're not going to get everything that you need you need to be able to come up with certain things on the fly and kind of do what you need to do to make it work right Interesting. It'll be cool. Um, are you going to be structuring it with the FinSuite client first, or uh, or if, in a way where the web a Figma to Webflow plugin can can read mm. and transfer it over? That'll be interesting. So this is structuring too, right? That that's yeah. Like to learn. That, that's another one I've been debating with uh, debating about too, and I'd love to know what people think. Um, I for one you know, mostly use FinSuite's client first. I love mm -hmm. a lot of the structure of it. I don't I don't necessarily copy over the the clonable that they use every time, but I like the naming structure okay. and the okay. way that they nest things. I think that sometimes like, you know, nesting things in margin just for the sake of having that margin is kind of overkill because I want I want things to be custom sometimes. But mm. I might do sort of a, a modification. So almost like it's sort of fin sweet. I'm going to teach you how to name things, but then it's also partly, you know, we're kind of doing our own thing. Like, I don't want you to be stuck within that particular system. If you want to use, you know, Corey Moen's mast, mm -hmm. go ahead and do that. If you want to do your own thing, that's okay. But um, we're definitely not using the default sections within Webflow. We're going to be making divs and, and turning okay. them into sections. Okay, so cool. No, no amateur stuff here. We're, we're going to do it for real. I'm going to show you how I really do it. So would you say it's a intermediate lesson to advance? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, right. I think that it, if you've never used Webflow before, this might be a little confusing. Maybe. If yeah. you've used Webflow at all, you're good. You can join. Come on in. The water's warm. We got, we got a Devin fan here. Kevin Levine saying, when I grow up, I want to be like Devin. Yeah. That sounds like a fake I, name. I, I'm not sure. It's like, <laughs> is that a real person? <laughs> Did you pay someone to say that? Okay, yeah. I've lost. This is bad, bad hosting. For oh, no. people who don't know you, who are you? What do you do? Where are you from? Give me all that stuff. I am. Wait, what were the questions? What's your real name? <laughs> What's your, who are you? I'm Devin Fountain. I am, as Josh said in the intro, a freelance web designer, web developer. I used to be a product designer for 10 years. Mm. Um, I worked at large startups. I've worked at small startups. I've worked on billboard advertisements, bus advertisements, entire Android phone operating systems for a luxury wow. Android phone where I collaborated with the um, physical product designer, Kareem Rashid. That was really interesting. He's the guy that's famous for, um, uh, he designed the the Blobject Mac, which is the the one with like the colored backs, if you remember those. Those are really cool. Okay. Uh, um, what was your? Oh, where am I? Where am I from? Yeah, I'm. I'm originally from Arizona, and then yeah. I um I lived in in the San Francisco Bay Area, specifically Oakland, for uh, ten to eleven years, something like that. And then um, after that, my my girlfriend and I ended up moving from um, SF to Brooklyn together. So now we live in Brooklyn, New York. Okay, nice. So I'm going to be at the New York City Webflow Conf. So if you're going there. Say hi, and I'll give you a sticker of my face. I'm not even joking. I have like a hundred of them. I should start making stickers. It's like three weeks away. Well, look yeah, and it's super yeah. cheap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you give me stickers, which don't, I won't put them on anything. They'll just go in a box forever. I don't. I just. <laughs> I'm like a minimalist. Like I don't like stuff. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I started sticking stickers on my laptop, but I have mm -hmm. a little plastic cover, so it's not like permanent. Yeah, so that's yeah. I kind of have an excuse I think that's to actually move. do that because sometimes I look at it's like you know putting stickers on your suitcase. It's so cool. Yeah, I, do like, oh, I, think, I do that. You know, I do. I do actually do that, and yeah. I like that when the suitcase like gets dinged up, the stickers get kind of like wear and tear in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I and I put a couple stickers from like Webflow Conf, like um. Maria Alcarail, I put her sticker like on my water bottle. A couple of other people, I think Reloom is a Reloom sticker. sticker. Yeah. yeah, Webflow sticker. But then like I put it in the dishwasher and it all just sort of <laughs> you know melted off. And then I have my one, my biggest sticker that I don't know what I'm gonna do with. It's the Bones Co. sticker. It's like, dude, it's ah. like a foot long. I, I don't. I think that um, Brandon made a mistake, but when you printed that, but it's the biggest sticker I've ever received. 
<laughs> and to think that he gave them away for free is just wild. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I want to dive a little bit. I want to give you some uh, to spotlight Ooh, yeah. some of your work. So this is your yeah. previous agency website. And I see some yeah. of your Reloom components that have been altered. Yeah, I'm agency. so I'm not really doing that much anymore. I'm doing mostly yeah. freelance. Um, that being said, I do keep it open because like it's a really good. I mean, it's a really good site. Like to yeah. be fair, I, I'm really proud of the way it came out. I like all the little interactions. <laughs> I think it's even got some you know small micro moments that I love, like the you know the underline on the URL there, or even like highlighting text has like the green on black effect, which is really cool. Um, oh yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm I I found that. Um, you know, I, I tend to get more clients doing freelance than I do, you know, doing this. And not only that, but I think, and I, and I was talking to Rand about this, but, you know, a lot of the issues that come with these sort of like design as a subscription service is that it's a lot of production work. And it's, um, mm, okay. you know, if, if, if production work is for you, that's great. I used to do production work when I was younger. It's hard. It pays well, but it's kind of boring. There's, you know, it's just, hey, get this thing done. Um, we don't really have time for you to think about it. Right. Interesting. Yeah. Production work. Okay. Um, I want you to share and expand more on that. But before that, I'm I, I'm all over the place. So the agenda for today, <laughs> we're going to chat. We're going to chat for a little bit. This and is, then, that's my uh, fault. No, no, it's all good. See, you just, uh, you make me relax, you know? I'm sitting on a couch and I, I just I just lose my yeah. focus. Uh, so uh we got a bit of a show and tell later on as well and we're gonna dive into webflow we're actually gonna look at the new um reloom site ai site builder hell yeah um, and this is all designed and developed by devin um that's and right so it's super interactive it's really awesome and it's got the bento style design which is super trending right now and yeah we yeah. want to just I want to I want to dive into like how you made it open up your webflow file and um, yeah yeah really for fun, sure so. so that is the agenda and then we'll just have some Q and A so guys if you're watching live just uh, ask some questions and uh, it'll be fun so okay uh, tell me more about like you said production work what do you mean by that production work like um, <clears throat> you know hey we we need a we need you to resize forty of these icons down to you know from 64 by 64 to 24 by 24 like okay. hey we we really need this um this website built which um ironically dev work is a bit like production work and that it's like just get this thing done mm. um but it's just sort of a lack of like creative um okay. you know creative input that's it's like you don't really have a whole lot of time to, yep. to be thinking about those when the promise on your site is that you will deliver something in 48 hours or less. Mm, okay. So, you know, the client comes to you and they're like, Hey, um, we need a whole landing page and you have 48 hours to do it, but you've mm -hmm. also got three other clients. Yeah. It kind of like trims down a lot of your creative juices. It, it trims down your time by a lot. Okay. So like, you know, if you take, um, let's say you're going to work a really standard eight hour day, right? Which like with three clients, no, you, you're just not going to do that. But let's take, yeah. you know, eight hour day, you have two days to deliver. That's 16 hours divided by three clients. But let's say four, if you're going to try to make a living off of it. Mm -hmm. That means that you have four hours total for that one landing page. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you just got to get it done, which, uh, by the way, is a really great uh, use for the Rayloom site builder. Um, highly recommend the Rayloom site builder <laughs> or the Rayloom <laughs> library of components. Yeah, uh, and Je yeah, Jeff said it's just like executing a set of instructions. I fully yeah. agree. Well, you're not being that... an an order taker, right? Yeah, you're being an order taker, and like, like I said, if you are into production work, mm -hmm. there's good money in that, mm -hmm. and it's easy in the sense that you don't you're not really thinking a whole lot. It's like put on your favorite podcast, put on your favorite music, maybe watch a TV show, and then uh, you know pump them out, get it done. So it's almost like the client is the creative director in a sense, and they kind of tell you what to yeah. do unless, unless you have your own you know, in-house role. But it sounds like you, you yeah. just tell you what to do and you execute, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and they can tend to be really picky too because, I mean, you know, when, when clients are cheap, um, they want things fast. 
they want it cheap and they want it good. They want all three points of the triangle, you know, mm-hmm. instead of good and fast, but not cheap. And that's okay. right. You know, it, it can tend to take take the creative process out when they're having to do everything and you don't have the time. And the thing is, like the, the people that need this sort of thing, they're not creative people by nature. They just right. need you to get it done. I see. So yeah. for them, it's like, here's three websites. We want it to be just like this website. Uh, mm-hmm. Go. You know. Right. Okay. 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 Yeah. So th- this is just this this subscription unlimited creative uh, offering service, right? Uh, it is. I mean, yeah. there are you know some infin- infamous people out on Twitter who who promote this stuff. So I want to get yeah. your take on this. Like, do you think it's manageable? Is it just like unrealistic? Can you actually? I pull think it's it unrealistic. Off? Okay. Yeah. I I, I think it's and unrealistic. Is that why? Uh, people are getting triggered and, and they react. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I know what you're I talking won't about. Mention names. <laughs> I won't mention names either, but I'll say this. It is unmanageable in the sense that if you've ever had two clients at the same time, which is, yeah. it's not a lot. Two clients is like, you know, it's fairly manageable if you can split your time like that. Mm-hmm. Then you start to get into three and then four four and four is tricky like i said if you're trying to deliver something yeah. you know and you're working a 40 hour work week each client is only getting 10 hours which is approximately a day and you know a morning if mm-hmm. that then you're you're really starting to cut your you know cut your time and you're going to have to work overtime and and four and four clients on a design subscription service is just a really standard tech job salary so like if you want to make more than that like some people are like <laughs> <laughs> I'm making a million dollars a year. It's like, yeah, okay, but um, you know, your kids never see you, and uh, your wife never sees you, and uh, you don't have any free time, and uh, you tend to, you know, separate from reality because of it. It's just right. like an unsustainable thing, and I think that, you know, one of it sort of dips into one of the problems that I have with, um, like, I I, I want to use the term. I'm just going to use the term design celebrity, designer yeah. or development celebrity. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the problems that I have with the design celebrity is that they eventually reach a point where they're almost like disconnected from uh, disconnected from from the rest of designers, from from the amateur level, from the junior level, from the mid level to the point where the things that they're doing are so far removed, but they're talking at an audience that is that junior level, is that mid level. And these people think that if they too can, you know, fly close to the sun, they can make tons of money and be famous too. Mm. But they, they, and then, and then they'll sell these services and, 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 and market these eBooks and courses and stuff that are like, Hey, if you, t- if you buy this thing, if you get, if you give me this money, you can be just like me too. And I think that that's just such an mm. unrealistic standard for any designer to achieve. Have and taken, it's false marketing. Have you taken their courses and it, do you, you feel like it doesn't match up with their content, the instructions that they give? Or no, but I've read, a, I've read a lot of um, like testimonials from, from really unhappy users on, on Twitter about some of them. Oh, that being okay. said, um, if there's one course, I think it's currently closed now, but if there's one course, one designer that I can truly recommend, anything Dan Petty puts out mm-hmm. is, is worth really? taking okay. part in, worth paying for. Um, I'd also recommend Joey Banks is a, a great teacher. Yes. That guy just has like a natural pedagogic skill. He's yes. crazy good at that. Um, anything that she technically doesn't charge for it. I think she has a course coming up, but Grace Walker, her, she's oh, so fucking good. Nice. Um, I love her stuff. I think I'm excited for Jessica Strelioff's stuff that's coming yeah. up. I'm really excited. I love Jessica's work. Like, mm. you know, when, yeah. when, when it was announced that she had a new agency, I was like, instant bookmark instantly going into my you know I- inspiration folder for sure that's awesome yeah interesting okay yeah. cool cool um, um really quick yeah. eric said talking at instead of talking with skews your perception of reality i totally agree oh and he mentioned um mds matt smith dude yes i was gonna ask him mds course him. shift yeah. nudge yeah legitimately good went through it holy shit there is so much good knowledge in there. If you if you're like, ah, I think I want to become a designer or you're a junior designer now or maybe you're mid 
to senior and you're like, I kind of want to level up my skills. I feel like there's a gap. Um, take MDS's course. It, it, and, the, and the thing about MDS that he does right is that, well, one, he is a working designer. So he knows what he's talking about. He's been doing this for a long time. But two, um, he has a cohort. So like, it's not open all the time. You're not just doing the coursework or like, you know, you're not just buying the course and then going, okay, I bought it. I'm just going to follow along at my leisure. It's a cohort. So like you have to do the work to, you know, to get something out of it. Yeah. And then he'll check in with you, which is awesome. Yeah, that's good. So how many people does he take in for his uh, courses? I don't know. <laughs> okay. The thing I love I about bet, Dan Petty. I bet it's like 50 or something. Yeah. He like makes commercials. It's something about it's generating your website yeah, oh, I, with AI yeah. in seconds or something silly like that. Yeah. Very entertaining. And he's been around for a while. Dan, I, yeah. I didn't know about him. Well, I didn't know he ran Epic Currents until I chatted with him for the first time. And I was like, oh, I you're the guy. It's yeah, crazy. back in the day. I, he was my... Dan Petty was my design hero. I still is my design hero since... I think since I was in like late college or like when I was 21 and I got my first designer job, he was my design hero. He was, you know, he was that guy on dribble. You know what? Actually, I just remembered this. I had a a class in college. Um, I I went to school actually for web design new media before I dropped out. Mm. Um, But in one of the the classes in particular, there was um, there, there was a homework assignment where we had to create an app, an iPhone app, like design an iPhone or Android app from scratch. Mm. And this is a, this is when Photoshop was like all the rage still. So sketch and Figma didn't exist. And I was so inspired by Dan Petty that I, and I don't surf, but I made a, like a surf <laughs> conditions app that was like, that would like tell you if it was like, you know, good surf conditions or not based on what, what other surfers would vote. Basically right. like they would vote like yes or no. And it would like, it was almost like a weather app, but for surfing mm-hmm. and like, yeah, I like, I don't surf, but I was like, Dan Petty is so cool. Like <laughs> I want to make an app where he would like, like I had in my head again, this is the thing with design celebrities. Like I had in my head this idea that, um, and I think a lot of young people have this idea too. They're like, yep. if I make this thing, that, and then he'll he'll see the thing and then like we'll be connected mm-hmm. you know like mm-hmm. he'll know me and, and and in my head that was like you know some sort of special thing was the, the idea that i would get work from him or like we would partner on something together and and <laughs> you know the, the 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 more most truthful part of that situation is that um i was not ready i was absolutely <laughs> not ready by any means to design any app at any point in time with Dan or with any company whatsoever. I took a look at it the other day and it's um, rough. <laughs> it is rough. Hey, you got to shoot your shot, right? You yeah. Give it a go. That's how you grow. Yeah. I would love to show you. I'll, I'll see if I can find it afterwards. Sure, um, sure. It's yeah, not great. So, okay. Interesting. Tell me more about this design celebrities. I mean, is it because they're creating content on youtube or social media and uh do you see it becoming a bad thing or yeah like what are your thoughts on that no i mean i don't think that that creating the courses is necessarily a bad thing i think that some of the people that tend to like you know rise up you know the the cream of the crop if you will Mm -hmm. um a lot of it is you know, luck based or like, did your, did your thing go viral? Mm-hmm. And, and I feel like some of those people then immediately think, oh, I'm important because of it. Right. I, yeah. you know, it, whatever I say goes, mm-hmm. whatever I say, people will eat it up. And then, you know, it, in turn, it gets that goes to like, too, I guess. Right? Yeah, it, yeah. It gets to your head. And I think that's what, that's what Eric was getting at, which is like talking at people instead mm-hmm. of with people, mm-hmm. um, which is something that like, I hope that I, never become and i and i fully understand that the more followers you have the the harder it is to to interact with people right because like if you've got five thousand followers and you've got let's say 30 people that's a really low number but 30 people interacting with you daily keeping up with 30 people every day plus 
your job and you know your social and personal life and any other obligations you might have becomes very difficult and you start to drop those 30 people and you start to interact with 20 and then 15 and then it becomes more it becomes easier to just again talk at those people rather than with mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. um so i mean i hope that i always get a chance to talk with people rather than um at them but i i have i, I kind of understand you know where, where that's coming from like fonz mans is a really busy guy yes. so i i he's got like what like fifty thousand followers or something now I, I might even be under on that number um but he's you know he's still working with me and benton and, and matt on the footer gallery site which is, oh, is great he helping you with that too yeah he's, Man, he's helping out with that just adding more and more people to yeah that. it's like a sick like quadruple collab i'm excited for that should be should be out soon actually i think i think um we posted a um oh, image this morning it was like hey we're, we're coming soon he's closing close to eighty thousand followers. It's crazy Ooh. it's crazy that's um, so many but the guy Good is for him beast he just yeah. launched off grid last month and then yeah um then there's this community community guide, which is another one which will be launching mm -hmm. uh, October. Oh, I, I didn't guess. hear about that one. Yeah, well, there's a wait list for it, and <laughs> right, so yeah, uh, pretty wild, interesting. Um, yeah, but, he's a good dude yeah. though. He's so talented too. Like he's yes. one of those people where he's not he doesn't just have the followers, but like he's good. Yeah. He's yeah, actually yeah. good, and I and I respect that. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah and he gym. and he taught a session at the design gym. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, saw some of those just, posts go up. They're cool. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, that was fun. He was, uh, he definitely gave people a workout. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be catching up with that this weekend. Um, I got to watch his. I got to watch Joey Banks. Yeah. Um, and then I think is Benton's Posters. tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks, man. Let's see. Here you go. He got yeah. these like little. So beams. cool. I don't even know how those were made. Like, I love Figma. I use Figma a lot, and I see those, and I'm like, okay, how did you get that one's cool? I love the that it yes. goes through. Right? Zach, love your design. So clean. That that guy, Zach, is an amazing designer. Sick. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, what else did I want to talk about? I mean, you want to talk about fashion? Tell me about. Uh, Ooh. Well, well, before that, I think you were you were alluding to um, how these design celebrities they'll create courses but then it may not relate too well with junior designers and yeah you definitely have a passion for mentoring junior design designers yeah so how did that come about and like do you just empathize with where they're at and uh yeah like why do you do it yeah I, so it's something that i've always wanted to do i think like when i was at my my previous startup i was at two startups before i do what i do now mm -hmm. and um at the first first previous one if that makes sense um i i was working with a team of about five and i think two of the people in there were like kind of um you know junior ish uh and i think one of my favorite things to do was just like look at people's work and critique it and like help them grow as people and like more importantly um help them make more money like mm -hmm. help them to have the conversations that are uncomfortable that, you know, people don't want to have, like how to talk to your manager, how to ask for time off, like seriously, like okay. really simple yep. things that scare people. Mm -hmm. um, and I love that part. And then at my second startup, I was the only designer there. I was the lead designer. So I didn't really get a chance to do that. Mm -hmm. But I found an avenue through sort of like teaching the engineers mm -hmm. and teaching some of the customer service team how to use Figma and how to use the design system that I had set oh, up there okay. because I wanted to enable everybody else to be able to do the same thing that I did. You were an advocate, um, like you fell in love. Yeah. With yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, I ended up quitting in, um, December, 2021. Mm. Uh, and I, you know, I, the, the actual, the true reason that I ended up quitting was because I wanted to start my own, like, uh, mentorship service or like my my own like course on mm. not necessarily becoming a designer but sort of like getting what you want as a designer okay you know, getting the pay that you deserve asking for that time off asking for a promotion you know having those difficult conversations writing contracts things that are um you know considered to be generally like uncouth and you saw that there's a huge 
need and demand for this? Is that why? Yeah, because I mean, even talking to my my friends, my my peers, it's like mm. this stuff comes up all the time. And mm. even when they ask in like really private discords or even through a DM, they're like, "Hey, like, um, you know, I want to I want to tell my client that I don't really like working with them, but like." I don't know how to do it. And like, but don't tell them, don't tell them I told them that. And I was like, why would I do that? <laughs> but that came up so frequently right. that yeah. I was like, okay, I've had enough of this job and I want to be working with, um, you know, junior designers, things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I, I ended up stumbling across um, the flow party with um, Melissa. Uh -huh. And I just straight up was like, these are my people. Like I want to do Webflow all the time. I like these people. I love helping people. And I feel like I learn really quickly. So mm -hmm. I, I immediately decided I'm going to nudge myself in there and become an essential part of the community. So it wasn't just me coming in and being like, you know, um, yeah, I, I like you guys. Uh, we'll see if you like me too. But me coming in and be like, <laughs> all right, who wants to learn from me? You know, that's that <laughs> sort of thing. And dude, honestly, the best part is like when when new people join and you sort of like get to do a bit of that, like you get to like help them sort of grow as people. And then, Oh, my dog just joined me on the couch. She's going to, she's going to nestle on this pillow here. <laughs> um, you know, when new people join it, it's cool because then you get to see like the full growth of these people from like, Hey, I don't really know what to even put in my contract to like, flat out sort of disappearing from the flow party for a while to then them coming back and saying, Oh, sorry. Um, I got busy. And I'm like, that's great. Don't apologize for that. Are you kidding? Like that's, that's amazing. I, I love seeing that kind of thing. Mm. You know, when they, when they completely get so busy that they're like, I haven't just haven't had time to like participate in the community. Like, don't worry. We'll be here when you get back. But for now you keep growing and you keep doing you. So that's that's sort of like, man, I love that shit. That's my that's jam. Awesome. This it's, is my um, this is my my moving fast and Figma, yeah, uh, flow party thing. A lot of people like that. It was it was fun. This I, was so good, honestly. Yeah, you you're a master. I I will just say like, and the way you describe things and articulate yourself while doing design. Um, yeah, like you're, you're a natural teacher and even I loved your slides and I was actually very impressed. And you said that you just like put it together like, uh, Oh, this is before. Yeah. I was, I was asked, um, so somebody ended up canceling. I don't remember who it was, so I can't like blame anybody cause I don't remember, but somebody ended up canceling from doing a flow party. And so I was like, Melissa was like, Hey, could you, could you do one? I was like, yeah, sure. I'll do one uh, about moving fast and Figma. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, I put this together and I think like uh, one night and, a, and then a morning and then I didn't even practice. It was just like, OK, we're going to we're going to do it. We're going to go. And um, yeah, I think it I think it's fun. Like the slides are crappy in a way that's like no, so uh, unserious and, and, and not, you know, pretentious. It's like it feels like a friend to put it together for you. But it, it was it's so good. There's so much content in there. Um, you're probably way more critical on it, but I, I enjoyed it. It was, it was yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm very critical of my own work for sure. Yeah. Now, how do you balance, man, this is a good conversation. We're just flowing. Um, oh, cause we're just, we're just friends, you know, <laughs> I you should, know. I should host live streams more on the couch. This is good. You guys enjoying there's this? There's something, live? there's something about live streams on the couch too, where they just yeah. feel like, well, two things, live streams on the couch. It's like, wow, this is so casual. Yeah. This is like you'd hang out with a friend in your living room with. Mm -hmm. And also I'm holding my microphone. <laughs> yeah, I, I should do that. Which like usually it's mounted in my desk in the back. And it's so like it's so stiff. It's just like, mm -hmm. you know, there's something about having your microphone like pulled up to your mouth like a streamer. And it's sort of like sitting off stream and you're like well lit and stuff. And it's like, yeah, you know, they, they grab it and they're like, mm, what's up, chat? You know, yeah. it's yeah. Yeah, there's some awkward setups out there. Yeah. Sure. But this is good. Well, those who are watching and listening, let me know, or watching live, uh, let us know what you want to talk about as well. I think that would be cool. Um, but yeah, I think this is time to kind of transition into Ooh. the little show and tell. So we might as well okay. do that. 
I, maybe unless you want to talk a little bit about fashion. Up to no, you. that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't care. I, I love, um, well, I mean, if you guys know Devin, he is like we met in San Francisco, and um, he just knew so much about fashion. He took us around uh, some spots to shop around, and also he's a great cook. So I, think I am. He's just multi talented guy. Yeah, I'm actually thinking. Um, you know, uh, well, well, I'll, I'll tell you that, that part in a second because it's about Webflow Comp, but I'll do the first part. Um, mm. So, one of the things that I like about the fashion stuff, and then, and I think this wasn't really evident when, like, we first met, like, even even when Melissa and I first met, because she she knew that I was into fashion too, and I think mm. she used to work in the fashion industry, and. When people saw me show up to Webflow, it's just like in a t-shirt and some jeans and stuff. And it's like, well, I'm traveling. I can't really bring a whole lot with me. But the other thing is that like I have gone through all sort of genres of like fashion style. Like mm. I've done the Rick Owens, greedy stuff, the like dark, you know, the dark ninja stuff. Like when people are first getting into fashion, they love to like dip into Rick Owens and be like, I'm so cool and unique. It's like, I did that. I did that a while ago. Like we, we we done did that. Okay. I've done the Americana look, you know, the like cowboy boots and jeans and like a denim button up. I've done the preppy Ivy League look. Like I think, yeah, this Rick is Rick Owens. Owens. Okay. Yeah, the the Dark Lord. You himself. did that, yo. Yeah, it's, yeah, That's totally, intense. totally. And 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 you know the thing is like, a, a lot of people think that fashion is like really um, stuck wow. up and 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 uh, pretentious. But it's just like anything else. Like if you are in a creative work and you're, you know, uh, poo-pooing, I hate that word, poo-pooing. If you're putting down fashion, <laughs> like my mom, what if you're mean? putting down fashion, then it's like, what are, you, what are you doing? Like fashion is just another way to express yourself. And I think that one of my favorite parts about it is that going through all of the different styles and, and mixing and matching things absolutely changes the way that people oh, perceive my. you whether you like it or not, people will perceive you differently. So like when I wore stuff like this, um, people were a little more standoffish, a little more cold. I, you know, they uh, ca like cashiers and stuff don't treat you as nicely there. I, I don't want to be like they feared me, but it's like the same sort of hesitation as like, should I yeah. even be talking to this person? Or am I going to be robbed? Mm. And then you switch to like, you know, sort of like more an Americana look, which is, I guess, what people really tend to like gravitate towards when they're starting to get into it. You know, a lot of a lot of people on the Internet find themselves gravitating towards like, um, I mean, not anymore, but the male fashion device subreddit on on Reddit. And is this Americana? Um, yeah, that's that's definitely definitely a Bruce Springsteen album cover look okay. or like Visvim. Visvim's like a Japanese uh, repro this? look. Yeah. Japanese Dude, repro. I, what's this called? Japanese. It's called J Japanese repro. Repro. Uh, re repro just means uh, reproduction. It's essentially uh, um, Japan's. Um, it, I, so it originally Dude. came from this. I don't remember the guy's name. He he came over to the U.S. and he was studying um, at an Ivy League school, and uh, he really liked the way that people dress, and he decided to to bring it back to Japan. I think because I um, love this. Stuff. Yeah, so it, it's essentially Japan's approach to reproducing um, the 1900s American oh. workwear. So it's it's their look, their take on it, and I, I'm a big fan for sure. So if you like Japanese repro, I would highly recommend the the brands. Um, sort of uh, Capital is great with a K, um, or Slow O O R S L O W. Um, Visvim is really cool, but very very expensive. Um, this is, Yo, you know, absolute, cool. absolutely the look. Yeah. But, um, you know, so as I was switching up styles, it was just really interesting to see how people treat you differently. And I found that to be really interesting. I think these days I tend to be more of like, I see it as more of like a spectator sport only because it's mm. such an expensive hobby to participate yeah. in. Yeah. But if you want to participate in this hobby, like don't let other people's opinion of fashion, you know, deter you from participating it's like it's it's a hobby it's fun it's supposed to be fun like yeah one of my i'll say this one last thing before we move on one of my favorite things when i moved to new york city new york city 
the Big Apple. It's the fashion it was, district, yeah. Sure, yeah. Lots of fashionable people here. I've never felt more unfashionable in my life moving here. <laughs> um, but one of my favorite things is that there's this sort of like unspoken rule in New York City, specifically like the Soho area of Manhattan. Okay. Um, which is like a very fashionable area. A lot of fashion stores are there. There's an unspoken rule where um, if you are attempting to participate in the hobby, if that makes sense, and another person is also attempting to participate in the hobby, and you both think that you're fashionable, you do this sort of like scan up and down, like you scan each other, right? It's like, but the scan is like, you don't see me scan. I see you scan <laughs> but maybe, but, but you don't see me scan. But we scan each other and we don't say anything and we judge each other's clothes. But yeah. my, I, when I moved here, I was like, Oh, I, no I noticed that. But you know what else I noticed? My favorite thing was to break that sort of like unspoken rule. Uh -huh. And if I see somebody that I and I like their clothes, I go like, dude, like I really shot. love your you I really it. love your pants. Like these are sick. I really like the silhouette that you're doing is is really interesting and fantastic. Mm -hmm. And they just light up because it's like really? holy shit, somebody is breaking out of this this rule set. And like mm -hmm. they're actually saying it because nobody else in the whole city is gonna say anything about their outfit. Maybe their friends might be like, Yeah, it's pretty mm -hmm. cool. But to have a stranger be like, oh, I love this and to like go into detail about what they love about it mm. is is it's so fun to watch and to participate in. Why do you do that? Why do you think you do that? Do you, are you kind of is it to break the rules or is it more so just to uh, spark that conversation and, and compliment someone? Yeah, I love the conversational aspect. Like I love I love talking to people. I think that um, a lot of people mistake that for me being an extrovert. Like I don't. Mm. I don't like to go out at night and like go to parties and stuff. I don't enjoy that kind of thing. Um, WebflowConf, for example, was pretty exhausting for me. Oh, was it? Okay. But guess, like, yeah, I thought you were really social, but I guess you were just like emptying your, yeah, like, your social what, battery. Yeah, I'm <laughs> emptying my social battery. Like when I when I turn on, like that's it. Like it's like, okay, I'm out. We're gonna do this, you know. Yep. And I I enjoy it when I'm doing that. But then when I when I've hit my limit, I'm like, okay, time to go home and have little mouse time time to go sit in bed and be under the covers and have my little seltzy water and watch tiktok <laughs> that's awesome well thank you that oh i'm so glad we talked about fashion because i i've been trying to find that fat that that sentence that japanese repro japanese repro yeah or I japanese know. americana whatever you want to call that that's yeah. like uh i've been looking into this um what was it like old military like uh Recycled military clothing. Milserp. Is that what it okay? Milserp, mil military surplus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But they're all but just way more sub -genres. It's not straight from the sur surplus store though. It's like it's got a twist to it. So I've been really digging that. That's cool. Mm. Okay. All right. Hard yeah. transition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard transition yeah. into well for those who are listening to the podcast, thank you for enjoying. We're gonna wrap it up here and then uh now we're we're gonna do a little show and tell. On the Bye, YouTube. I love so, you. So yeah, <laughs> lots of love from Devin. Thanks for listening. And that's it. Okay, transition to. I want to. I forgot to show. Um, yeah, let's talk shit yeah, now. I mean, the typically, this is a battle. White. So you went up against Joseph Barry in the last Reloom Design League. Uh, that was so unfair, by the way. Who did that? If it was Dan or if Dan, if you did that, Adam, if you did that, you're done, dude. I'm not doing work for you no more. Yeah. Well, can you tell me your thoughts? What was going on? Is it? Oh, because he specialized like in, in all that stuff. So it was an unfair advantage. It was no, because it was like, I OK, like I don't want. OK, I'm not I'm not going to name names and I'm not going to like rank people. <laughs> but I felt like some people were uh put together that seemed like a more fair match okay. <laughs> and then it was like <laughs> me versus joseph and i was like are you are you fucking kidding me like <laughs> this guy's like my design hero and you're yeah. putting me up against him <laughs> and then and so he and he had like you know i don't think anybody talked about this but he had like an intimidation tactic like he would message me every oh, day really he yeah he would message me every day on discord and be like i've been practicing <laughs> have you been practicing <laughs> like, so no i i haven't i didn't think that i would need to oh, and you know he, would, no he would like he would like retweet the um 
you know, the announcement and be like, I've been practicing. Devin hasn't. <laughs> like, come on, dude. <laughs> Yeah, yeah so, I don't know. It was, it was, no, it wasn't fixed. I mean, we, we, it was hard. Yeah. It's hard to put together and line up people, but I, we figured, hey, like, who's got a good chance to go up against Joseph? We all knew he was, yeah, he was one of the, a top contender. And to, I mean, to be he fair, it's the champ. I think I did pretty damn good. Yeah. So, so, okay, this is, this is a thing. Cause you went with the fixed wireframe that was provided by Reloom. And yeah, Joseph went blank canvas, and yeah, he went do free you mode. Think that hey, thanks for watching, Joey. Off? Oh, hey, Joey, what's up? Um, yeah, I think that that I think that oh, I think it threw me off a little bit. Um, you know, tr I thought for sure that the Reloom Rumble meant you're using the Reloom products. <laughs> yeah, so, so you it know, was I was like, like that. Hey, like this is what they gave us. You know we're going to be working within that constraint so i did that and then and then other people were just like yeah i'm not doing that i was like okay um i guess that's to my detriment then i don't know sure. so that's that was the thing that was the theory to to examine like would you yeah. be better doing it from scratch or wouldn't you want to have pre-designed and pre-placed uh components with a layout don't... I don't know. I think that sometimes the auto layout stuff, like I'm, I consider myself to be really good at auto layout. Mm -hmm. Like if Joey Banks and I were to go up against each other in like a pure auto layout <laughs> sense of like put this thing together, I think I'd stand a pretty good chance. Sorry, oh. Joey. Oh, she's, but he's watching. But if it if it came down like when it comes to like the Reloom Rumble stuff, yeah, you know, a lot of the auto layout stuff is set up in a way where it's like this yeah. isn't how I would design it this isn't how i would build it and right. in fact there was a component um from actually from the recent nav video that i did with reloom mm -hmm. where i where i took uh, three different mood boards using one nav component and restyled it three different ways yeah, yeah um when i first broke it down i was like this is not how i would build it and i reached out to damien and i was like can you rebuild this this way he's like okay. this is how you would really build it and um he ended up changing it which is great but like I felt that way with a lot of the the components in there. That was like me trying to move quickly and sort of being caught up on, um, you know, some of the way that it was structured was like difficult. So maybe I would choose to go freeform next time. You know, I, I'm I'm not sure. Yeah, well, I mean, the real components are made for uh, Webflow, right? Like transactional Webflow. So they have the client for structure yeah. and uh, nested layers baked into it yeah but but for you know the really design league later on we we took out all the auto layouts so that it was easy to move around but i think people for one didn't know much about the the components and so they were they mm -hmm. thought there was too many nested things so they wanted they didn't want to be constrained so then they did that and also they were just more comfortable with the blank canvas but still yeah i'm curious it was all about speed anyways it was interesting um yeah I mean, I thought that I did great, and I, I like regardless of whether he, you know, he. I was gonna say regardless of whether he won, like he did win. Um, I am extremely proud of what I was able to accomplish in thirty minutes. It was mm -hmm. like a ton of fun, very stressful. Um, I remember it also being very cold in my back office. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I think I'm it wearing like a, a hoodie. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah. being very cold in the back office and I had to turn off my heater because it was loud. And so yeah, um, I was designing in 30 minutes against Joseph Barry and I was freezing. It was like <laughs> it was like 20 degrees Fahrenheit outside or something like that. And like my house is not very well insulated. Uh huh. Yeah. So, OK, hey, J yeah. Joey says Joey says, oh, he'd be the one intimidated. So, uh, yeah, you. Yeah, no, I think I think maybe we should set up a. <laughs> An auto layout battle, however that looks I, like. That would be so fun, dude. I mean, even if it's not me versus Joey, it would just be fun to like, I think auto layout is just the best. I even talk about it in a Reelin video that I just recorded that should yeah. be going up, I believe, tomorrow Okay. Um, on how I built the site builder, which we can okay, transition yeah, into that. Yes, yes, um, yes. There's a part in there where I talk about you know, it's okay if you don't really like auto layout, but for me, it helps me move faster. And I understand why people don't like it due to its um, rigidity, for example. Yeah. So, okay. 
walk me through this process because uh what's the backstory behind this like even even right here um well yeah so okay here's the here's the thing so um back in july dan and adam want the, they're the rayloom founders by the way for people who are watching and don't know dan and Nice and adam there's adam. i don't remember adam's last name what's adam's last name adam mura <laughs> adam mura yeah. um, dan and adam reached out to me um we had a, we wanted to work on something together for a while and nothing ever seemed to like work out like i would be busy with something or um they wouldn't they couldn't find the time uh to work with me and you know and i had already done the video with reloom styling one nav component three ways and then i participated in the reloom rubble twice or maybe it's three times now actually yeah three times. um and you know they said even on the call like we really enjoy the way that you think about design and, and we want to work with you and i was like perfect like this is this is actually a really terrible time to work together because I was so busy with other clients at the time, but I really wanted to make it happen because I felt like this is a moment where I could really do something that I really wanted to do with them. Like, I, cause I know that they are, they love taking creative Liberty. Mm -hmm. Um, so mid July we had our kickoff call, um, and they basically sent me a link to something called blocks, which we now know is called site builder. Mm. And, they're like, hey, we really want to make a marketing site based off of this. Here's a link. Here's the, the 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 beta for it. I want you to try it out and I want you to see, you know, get get used to it and see what it's like. So I played around with it for a little bit. I actually had a client at the time that it was perfect for. So I got to try it in a real world scenario, generating site maps and um, uh, low fidelity UI for this particular client. I was working with um, Corey at the time, Corey Reynolds Flowman. And immediately after using the product and getting a list of key features from like a brief that they had, I knew that this page would be interactive. I was like, I want everything to be clickable here because I'm, I'm a big proponent in showing and not telling, right? I, I want people to immediately know how the site works without even reading a tutorial. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and I was inspired by um, Linear, like everybody is, the Linear site, linear.app, I believe is what it is. Um, and Marco Carnaccio, he's so fucking talented. I love Marco's work. I love his personal site and yes. I love what he did for diagram. Yeah. Um, he's an incredible designer developer, shout out. Um, so from those two, you know, I wanted to prioritize fun. I was like, sure, you can teach people how to do something by reading, but no one on the internet wants to do that. Let's make people curious. So, you know, the, the thought going in was like, if, if you're a user and you're, you're browsing through this, if one thing is clickable, is it all clickable? And that sort of like sparks that curiosity in people. Yeah. Um, so I, I knew that I wanted it to be all interactive and it would be sort of a bento box style build yeah. and design. So once they gave me the key features, we actually started in the low fidelity phase, just like every project that I work with. Mm -hmm. um, and they wanted me to design, write the copy and develop, which I was like, yes, absolutely. I would love to do that. I love controlling everything from beginning to end. Yeah. Um, so we 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 actually set up. Can I share my screen? I want. I'd yes. love to show. Actually, yeah, please do. By the way, I want to answer uh, Zach's question. A cat can uh, be the delivery. I meant to say a cat food company that delivers straight to a home, not a cat company that delivers to home. So. What are you referring to? Oh, I was just I was just doing the uh, company prompt of the uh, site web. The uh, site builder. Oh, I, I wrote that. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Like uh, I, well, I was trying this out here, but. Uh, I oh, sorry. oh, oh! I'm I thought you meant the screen. the example. Um, is my screen being shared now? Um. Yes. Give me a sec. Yes. Perfect. Okay. All right. Take it away. Right. So yeah. So it originally started as a low fidelity, and this is like a real genuine look. In fact, I'll actually jump back in the version history. So we can see like really what it looked like. We'll jump we back might go to... over time. You okay with that? We got six. Yeah, that's left okay. In the hour, so this is gonna that's be a cool. longer stream, but yeah, let's enjoy it. That's cool. Let me let me jump. I'm gonna go even older. I want to go back real far to like when when it first started. Okay, so this You're is actually to share this, yeah, 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 <laughs> okay. yeah. There's a video about it coming okay. out. Um. Yeah, I wrote a website for a cat sitter service. Like this is like Oh, you did too. That's so funny. I did, yeah. We're on the same uh wavelength. Yeah. So um I'm really bad at heroes, admittedly. Uh we actually saved the hero for last. Mm. Um 
but the general idea for the hero was like still there in its full sense. So it was mm-hmm. like what I did first was like take the key features and start writing the copy immediately without even jumping into like UI. It's all um, vertical uh, features that are just as copy. Mm-hmm. So like that, that was like the first thing I did because I think that content should drive design, not the other way around. Mm. So um, we started with the hero and I was like, okay, well, I want to create a bunch of tags for this. And um, I've worked with copywriters before. My girlfriend is actually a copywriter herself um, who thankfully knows how to use Figma. Um, but I, I, one of the things that I really love doing when I'm writing copies to, to create sort of the, the general structure for it and then immediately create variants. So like rather than hone in on like one particular piece of copy, I'll take that thing and like try other versions. So here, here's a couple of uh, variations that no one's seen yet. Um, this is the current one. Imagine a page in seconds now generate it, or I think it got shortened even to imagine a page. Mm. Um, and there was also generate a page as fast as you can imagine it, which is a bit wordy. Mm. Um, over promise over deliver, which tells us nothing yes. about the actual product. Right. Seconds, not days. Again, doesn't really tell us anything, but mm. is kind of like catchy. It makes you want to click in. So that was the idea behind this is just like write things that are key features, get the copy behind those first, and then do the UI after. Because again, yeah, this is this uh, product was still in beta. So um, we weren't sure if things were going to change or not, like certain functionality didn't end up changing from beginning to end. So we, you know, we ended up ditching some of it. So once we landed on the copy, again, just sticking with the ultra basic vertical layout here, and would it Remain vertical? No, but I I wanted it to just be like copy and then my prototype idea. And I'm a big proponent in um, doing prototypes that just convey the idea and and nothing else. Like mm. I wanted to get the idea across to you, and that's it. Like I'm not going to create a prototype um, a string together in Figma with you know this prototype spaghetti and create variables and all that. I just want to get the idea across. So like, here's the first one, for example, where you see sitemaps and seconds, pages and days. Mm-hmm. This idea where you can basically create your sitemap and add sections. This is it. Like, this is literally what I showed the team in full transparency. Mm-hmm. When I showed Dan and Adam, I said, we can go from this to this. When you hover, you get a plus. And when you mm-hmm. click the plus, you get another section. Mm-hmm. That's it. I know a lot of people, you know, dive really deep into doing prototypes and mm-hmm. um, they're super fun. I love your prototypes. Link them to me if they're really cool. But for me, um, right. I don't want to waste time in that. If yeah. I'm going to build it, that is mm-hmm. the prototype time. I want and to convey the idea. Communicate that, yeah, right. Yeah, then a couple spots here, and they're very basic. Like even here, this is just simple shapes and a basic. Oh, oh. I think we're losing you. Okay, we're we're back. Oh, sorry Inter- about that. Internet might be a little. Um. Tricky. Oh no, is it okay? We're good. We're good. Okay. Even for this section here, it was like these are very simple icons, but they were is maybe basically saying these are browser icons, and when you click them, they bounce. Very simple. So um, I didn't want to basically put a ton of stock into any of these in particular because you know ego aside, these might get dropped at any moment. Like this one did not make the final cut. Mm-hmm. Um, this is an idea for like, hey, you know our. Our product slots slots into what you already use, and you can sort of like um, change the the fonts on this. And I had Comic Sans as a little Easter egg joke, yeah. you know, maybe switching colors on there. But it the the thing with this is that it didn't it didn't convey what we wanted to convey. It was more fun than it was useful and informative. So we said, mm. okay, let's just drop it. Um, mm. Same thing with like this, where it's like you can add a page and you know it adds the components. It's just like this idea. Um, to basically like show off how it would build out uh, a UI. And it was like, it was cool, but it would require me to build essentially like nine different screens for this. Mm-hmm. So this is this is how the low fidelity panned out. It was like really simple. Very cool. And then moving over to the hi-fi, everybody's already seen this. This is exactly what it looks like on the mm-hmm. site right now. These are all auto layout all the way down. So like even the frame has auto layout. And I love mm-hmm. using auto layout for whole websites because if I want to swap sections, I can just right. do that really quickly. Yep. Um, and I can do that here as well, like move these up or down. And nice, this is really useful nice. for us because yeah, we found that awesome. a couple of these subsections, we didn't really like where they were positioned and we wanted to move them. So this is really useful in us just 
very quickly like okay we want to swap this from left to right or right mm. to left or move, move these up and down and you know using auto layout in these sections also created a constraint for me a space constraint and a mm. build constraint knowing that they are auto layout i immediately know okay these are essentially just flex box items i know how to build these and i know how i'll probably animate them because mm -hmm. if i were to do something fully custom and again i want to remind you that this is a really short timeline to build this like a week and a half to two weeks or something like that wow Ooh. um speed build yeah speed build indeed um I, I needed to know how to build these. And so if this is using some sort of like fun, interesting, like custom layout, I would probably have to hack something together. And I, you know, it could potentially not scale. Yeah. And I needed these to scale from desktop to tablet to mobile yes. and still all have the exact same functionality that they do um, on desktop. Right. So that was like a, a, a real challenge for sure. Mm. Um, and I, again, I, I kind of like do the same thing with the states here with the prototypes, like yeah. instead of, you know, going deep, I'm basically just like here, you know, here's what it looks like next. And then here's what it looks like next yeah. and then next. And it's I, like storyboarding, not... right? Like you don't even, yeah. Build a, yeah. You just do a rough storyboard of what, it's what like storyboarding. Doing. Yeah. And I think I if you're that. prototyping okay. something really advanced with Figma, yeah. you'll find that like you're trying to recreate it in Webflow and maybe like the timing doesn't quite match up because mm. like, you know, the, the timings are slightly different in Figma's uh, prototyping or maybe right. you want to do something more complex and, um, you know, the ability to convey that in Figma is a little bit more difficult mm. than in Webflow. Mm -hmm. So, you know, why bother? Yeah. Why bother? Just save time. Jump right into it. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, well, yeah, go. I'm just want to like, why, why not? To, let's just jump into the Webflow file. I just want to, unless you want to share something. Else. Sure. I have it open. I'm... Wow. Shocker. Um, <laughs> Because I want to know those bento boxes and the interactions. How yeah. do you keep it responsive, right? And also, right. Like, does it shrink? And then do you have a, a minimum width? And then at what point, you know, like, yeah, you, you must have spent a lot of time playing around with the responsiveness of each little bento yeah. square uh, or card. And yeah, so that'll be interesting. Like, walk me through that. Yeah. So if you'll notice, each of these things has sort of like, um, almost like equal width on the left and the right, the top okay. and the bottom on like a yeah. lot of these things. And it's because I said, um, I set a hard limit on like how wide these can go. For example, like this one gets like 20 rem max width and this one um, gets, I think a slightly different one. I'd have to like dive in. It's been a bit since I've like really yep, seen yep. this stuff, but all of them have a hard limit on, on width. And that's because I really wanted them to be able to scale. So like yeah. when we get to here, you'll, you'll notice that like, Nothing scales. I'm sort of taking the framer approach. I'm basically okay. saying, um, you know, once we hit this limit, we need to switch down to the next tablet size. Okay. Um, and something that I talk about in the video um, that'll be up tomorrow uh, is is basically that um, these particular sections are, if you look at like the class names, this mm -hmm. is like builder, feature bottom. Mm -hmm. I I gave everything on this page a I, I prepended the class name builder. So mm -hmm. that it would be completely siloed away from any of Reloom's currently existing stuff. Okay. Um, I didn't. I didn't want to accidentally override their classes because they have a lot of different products and they have a lot of different pages. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to accidentally mess that up. Oh, okay. And I wanted it so that um, if if for some reason they decided that they wanted to ditch this project, they could just mm -hmm. crush the whole thing and it would be completely fine. Like mm -hmm. there would be no harm in getting rid of it and then clearing out all the styles. It right. would be siloed off. Because this page has to exist in their existing website that has yes. all the classes already predefined and exactly. Uh -huh. So, um, yeah. diving in here, like if we're looking at this particular feature again, I'm using Builder and I'm saying this is feature two. I'm numbering uh -huh. them, and I'm saying this is the UI block. And so I'm using UI block everywhere else, and this is where like we are containing the entire UI. So you see, 20 rem uh, max width and 24 rem max height, mm -hmm. um, and then this is basically just using auto layout. I mean, uh, sorry, Flexbox, um, <laughs> all the way down. And yeah, I love um, FinSuite's client-first system, uh -huh. and I use it all the time, and I think I love the naming scheme. Mm -hmm. I think in some cases, if people were to see this file and break it down, they'd be like, well, you, you did this wrong, and you did this wrong. And it's like, well, 
dude, I, I got to do 11 components, 100% fully custom, all animated, and they have to scale from desktop to tablet to landscape to mobile portrait. So I need a million classes. So like if we dive down in here, you can see that there's like builder feature two UI top, builder feature two UI left container. And then like there's a hidden one wow. here, right container. It's like they're all custom classes. They're all they're all custom classes. Wow. Even okay. each button is unique to each um, particular parent animation because I need to make sure that that can scale appropriate to mm. its parent, not as a global thing, but as itself, because some items here are exaggerated okay. um, and they're, they're exaggerated because I wanted to convey the idea that, um, you know, some things affected other things without necessarily them being close together, because sometimes like, you know, uh, you'll have an instance where, uh, for example, if I scroll down here, um, this UI here would have like a shuffle button above it in the real site builder mm -hmm. and you click shuffle and it would sort of like, you know, reshuffle everything there. The problem is that in the real world scenario, this shuffle button is above this. Mm -hmm. But if we were to do this at the scale that it currently is, it'd be really tiny. So in some cases, we're exaggerating and blowing this up really large just to, mm. to get you to say, oh, I, this is probably the thing I should click to understand how this functionality works. And in some cases, taking creative liberty and making those buttons purple where normally they are black just to get you to see, okay, this is probably the thing that I should be clicking, you know, mm -hmm. real, real affordances on these particular components. So like, this is purple. Mm -hmm. um, I, I probably should have changed this. This share button is actually the one you click here, mm -hmm. but like this is blown up. This is a really tiny part of the interface and this is too, and they're not even close together, but it's like, mm -hmm. okay, I want this to be conveyed. So I'm going to gradient these off and, you know, make this button um, the most important thing. That's kind of how I was approaching all of this stuff. Okay, okay. So I'm going to share my screen, which is the actual site. Now, this one here, I want to... How did you do this interaction here? Oh, yeah. Um, that's funny. That's, that's actually the exact one I chose for the video. All right. Okay, okay. Let's see. Okay, so this is really, this yeah, is really interesting. We're on the same wavelength, man. Okay. Driving. So there is, there's actually, this is, this container here has yep. a couple of components. Um, it has this ellipses that doesn't do anything. Uh -huh. It has this shuffle button yep. and then it has an exact identical shuffle button that is hidden. So it's, it's okay. the same shuffle button here by class, but this one's one and this one's two. Uh -huh. And this one's hidden at all times because Webflow has a limit where if you click on something twice, uh, the first click does something the second click does something else. Mm. Um, there is no third click. It's either oh, one or two. Okay. Yep. So what I'm doing in this case, because I want this to shuffle three times. Like if I hit Command Shift P and we preview this and I click shuffle, mm -hmm. you'll notice that it, it can do it three times. It's so yep. like normally it would be max two. Mm -hmm. So we are doing something where this is like all their, all their interactions are here. It's like a lot of stuff um, where you click, it doesn't move, right? You click again. It does another move, but then it hides the original button uh, and, and shows the, the exact one. same duplicate buttons Smart. at the same time. Smart. Um, and then this is basically a really simple. Um, this is just really simple. Um, flex box. Um, yep. Every single item inside basically says, you know, don't shrink or grow. And they're okay. all living next to each other. And I'm basically just doing a really simple um, move transform on okay. these things. And then, you know, when we get to the the third button, just like that sort of sleight of hand where we swap the buttons, mm -hmm. um, we have three different uh, images hidden here. And the fourth image is the same as the first one. So as soon as we get to the fourth one, yep. we just swap it all the way back to the first one. So it appears like it never changed at all. Mm. So that's OK. The width of this, this is 100% width. But the animation to do the transform, is it by rem or I'm just curious? I think it's by, kind of I think it's by percent. Five okay. percent because okay. I don't. So I don't. 200, 300, something like yeah, that. it can't be rem because we don't actually know the width of this right, um, image right. because it needs to scale. Yeah, that was my question. Um, yeah. So yeah, we are doing minus one hundred percent, and the next one would be uh -huh. minus two hundred percent, and then um, cool, three hundred, cool, cool. and then back to the original. I feel like, you know, other than Joseph Barry and, and Joe Moore, we need like a more master classes or lessons on animation. <laughs> you know, and like the little hacks like this is so clever.
Yeah, I, you know the 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 problem really is um, that I just don't have the time. I don't have the time. Oh to, no, to, yeah, teach for sure. Stuff. Yeah, but like, it's a lot. It's learn? a lot of work. Is it just how did just I learn playing around? Yeah, I, how did I learn Webflow? No, the yeah, animations was, and oh, the animation stuff. Yeah, um, you know, being a product designer for ten years, I really wanted to have like animations and stuff in my apps that okay. I designed, and so I learned After Effects. Um, okay, and this is back in the days when like Lottie uh, was just called Body Moving. Um, yes, that, when that was just uh, one guy making it, Hernan Torisi. We used to chat all the time when I was younger. And he was like, hey, you should try out my plugin body move in. So it's like, okay, I'll try it out. And we ended up making the first um, Lottie implementation for Facebook long, long time ago. Really? And I've so I've animated since since then. Like I've always sort of loved animating and I get better and better at it as time goes on. And um, I also used to be a, a front end web developer and, and used to do WordPress stuff. And so. Yeah. I already have an understanding of like how the web is structured mm. and for Webflow interactions it's basically like, Oh, this is just CSS animations, but made easy. Right. Cause it's all visual and easy to understand. So it's like, okay, no problem. Yeah. So the, the first website I ever did in Webflow was actually uh, my girlfriend's portfolio, mm. um, Molly And, uh, you know, I decided I'm going to just try everything that Webflow has. I'm going to put Lottie files in there. I'm going to do transitions. I'm going to do page load, you know, hover interactions, whatever. So that was sort of me pushing the limit in a very sloppy way initially. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, the site probably could have been structured better, but you know, it was my first attempt at learning Webflow and understanding how it, how it worked and functioned. So um, yeah, yeah, I didn't, I mean, I didn't, I took, I, I took Joseph Berry's, um, like awards class is really great, yeah. but I, mm-hmm. I found that a lot of stuff in there was like, oh, okay, I, I know how to do this already. Right. It's more like, um, uh, th- maybe some things were more enlightening than others. Like, oh, that's yeah. how you would you would do that particular thing, or that's a great way of naming things. Right. right. Like more meta aspects of that. Yeah, it, it. I felt for me it was more custom because it, like, he would have this animation or all these properties baked into a single class. And I love yeah. how he would like think, I loved how his brain worked and like turning this on by a class and, you know, adding this on. Or yeah. Classes. It was really neat, but I felt like it was pretty custom. And if you were to like, I wonder if there's like some client first version where there's a common language to structure these animations, interactions, but, um, yeah, that was the yeah that's too. that's a hard part for sure. Name, yeah. Naming your interactions so that they yeah. make sense and naming your classes so that the animations are targeting yeah. targeting things in a way that it's not going to trip you up later when you step away and you come back to it is is a skill that takes yeah. time. Because the, the, the interaction engine for Webflow is pretty unique in the way it works. Like I don't think there's – like there's no – it's not a like – after effects where you have keyframe and timelines and things like that so it's it's pretty different yeah i think it's jquery actually right javascript right yeah 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 somebody told me that once yeah well cool man but anyways um that was awesome. yeah so yeah watch the video i go in in more high depth it's like uh it's about 20 minutes long um it's worth it i talk about some um tips on writing copy for your website, some like techniques on, on writing things that are like a little clever. Mm. Um, how I think about, you know, designing the low fidelity and the high fidelity and, um, you know, getting rid of your ego and then building it in Webflow. Nice. Okay. Look out for that. Uh, people yeah. are, Devin's loving the way your brain works. Um, yeah, Dale really enjoyed it. Zach loved the button swap. Genius. What is that? Magic wand? Yeah. Uh, Holy magic. Oh, I thought that was a pen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thanks, man. This is the longest stream we've had. I loved it. It was really <laughs> fun. It was more of just me chatting with a friend. And uh, yeah. for those who are watching, I hope you enjoyed it, too. Yeah, I love I love talking talking shop, for sure. Um, so, you know, if anybody is on watching and they're like, they want to sh- send me some design stuff, like, do that. I would love to, to take a look. Um, Rahul said Buffalo interactions are based on tram.js. Who knows? I don't know what okay. that is. Some sort of train system. <laughs> 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 so, 
Sweet. Well, thanks for watching. Um, if you, you got a little plug or anything, well, I think people are going to be checking out the reading. Um, you're, yeah, you're check also doing. You're creating content for Flux Academy too, so that's pretty. Awesome. I am. Yeah, I'm creating. So you're, uh, you're a bit of a design my, celebrity. Or okay, so. let's let's roll through it. Um, check out my Twitter. It's at Devin S Fountain, or if you prefer, it's x.com slash Devin S Fountain. Um, also, watch my videos on Flux Academy. Um, watch the, watch them a lot. Put them on loop so that I get lots of views, and then um, maybe <laughs> Rand will be like, "You're the best." Uh, yeah. Watch my stuff on the Reloom channel. Um, check out my work on Twitter as well. I'm also going to be launching um, Footer uh, yes. design with which is a footer only inspiration galaxy uh, gallery is there with, a preview uh, wood ring we can check out uh it was on twitter it was from benton actually it's, just, it's from the footer footer team itself so is there a footer handle yeah f-o-o-t-r footer design i believe is what, it's, what it is yeah there it is yeah okay okay yeah it's a little little preview it should be it's at the top it's the top post um yeah that's the one should be should be up soon. Um, we're just doing some minor bug fixes and we got to fill it up. But like, I'm stoked about it. I've always wanted to build a gallery page with people and doing it with Benton and, and Matt and Fonz uh, is like just a really cool, cool way to go about it. Um, yeah. One last plug. Um, you know, if you're on the East Coast, um, go have yourself a nice little lunch. Uh, you don't got to work so hard. Um, if you're on the West Coast, get another coffee you don't have to work so hard <laughs> design is a, a serious matter that doesn't have to be taken so seriously okay i love it that's nice okay we'll end with that thanks for watching zach saying uh give it a like if you enjoyed this uh um, yeah and uh see you next time Peace. bye love you